Okay, um, it's six o'clock in the UK, so um, I think we can start. Uh, well, welcome back, everyone, for today's keynote lecture, the first digital ecologies lecture, <laughs> keynote lecture ever. Um, we're absolutely delighted to be joined by Professor Jennifer Gabris, um, whose work has been foundational and will continue to inspire a lot of the work that we've been doing ourselves. Professor Gabrice is Chair in Media, Culture and Environment at the University of Cambridge and previously was Professor of Sociology at Goldsmiths in London, where she is now an Honorary Visiting Professor. Between 2013 and 2018, she was the Principal Investigator on the ERC-funded and award-winning project Citizen Sense, which explored how the public engages with environmental sensing technologies and citizen data generation in both urban and rural locations in the US and the UK. Currently, she leads the Planetary Praxis Research Group at Cambridge and is the principal investigator on the ERC-funded ERC project, Smart Forests, Transforming Environments into Socio-Political Technologies. In this project, the team investigates the increasing use of digital technologies to monitor and manage forests for addressing environmental change. And we're really glad that some of the presenters um, have been yet, some of the team members have presented today and some other ones will speak tomorrow. Professor Gabrice writes on the topics of digital technologies, environments, and social life, and has published, published extensively in these fields. In her 2016 book, Program Earth, Environmental Sensing Technology and the Making of a Computational Planet, published by Minnesota, she grapples with the consequences of wiring our world, examining how sensor-based monitoring of Earth creates new techno-geographies that connect technology, nature, and people. In 2019, Professor Gabrice published her second book with Minnesota, How to Do Things with Sensors, here she explores the ways in which things are made doable with and through sensors and considers how worlds are made sensible and actionable through the instructional mode of citizen sensing projects. Today, her talk will focus on her forthcoming work in the Smart Forest Project, looking specifically at an example of a smart forest city to analyze the social political effects of wiring up nature. So it's a pleasure to introduce Professor Gabrice to talk to us today. Just a reminder that the lecture is going to be around 45 minutes and then we'll have time for questions afterwards. And a quick reminder as well that the lecture is being recorded. So, um, Professor Gabrice, please feel free to share your screen and uh, thank you very much for joining us. Great. Well, thanks very much, Johnny, for that um, incredible introduction and um, also to Adam and Henry for uh, all of the amazing um, organization that has gone into this event. Um, it really has been quite an epic um, set of presentations today and so exciting to see this emerging field come together. So as Johnny mentioned, um, today I will be saying a bit about a Smart Forest City project, but before I get into the sort of nitty gritty of that, I want to discuss more generally how nature becomes programmed as infrastructure. So smart green infrastructures increasingly feature as key components of smart cities and urban development, along with digitalized infrastructures of water and lighting, buildings and roads, more organismal and ecological infrastructures of vegetation and soil, air and water are also undergoing networked monitoring, management and augmentation. Many smart city technologies that would ensure automated and optimized flows across communication and transport circuits have been implemented to measure air pollution, detect flooding, monitor soil health, and ensure adequate hydration of urban vegetation. Smart cities now program green as well as gray infrastructure. But what are the effects of these great smart green infrastructures? And how might they potentially exacerbate extractive economies and social inequalities at the same time that they attempt to mitigate environmental change? This presentation will discuss the possible consequences of wiring up organismal and ecological contributors to cities. Proposed and developing digital organismal urban connections give rise to networked infrastructures that are meant to achieve new levels of efficiency, responsiveness, and coordination. And here you can see um, an example of a, a park with networked forests um, from the sidewalk labs um, development in Toronto that was subsequently mixed, but uh, was fully um, outfitted with Internet of Things technologies. 
So even more than adding the digital to the natural, programmed green infrastructures strive toward an updated infrastructural ideal, here uh, drawing on Graham and Marvin, of joined up systems which are as likely to result in fragmented and splintering urbanisms. In another way, as Susan Lee Starr has suggested, the study of infrastructures can surface, quote, essential aspects of distributional justice and planning power, end quote. So what then are the social political effects of these programmed green infrastructures? To address these questions, I first consider how digital natural urbanism is materialized through projects and plans to incorporate digitalized green spaces into the logic of smart cities. I situate this analysis of smart green infrastructures within the, the Smart Forest Research Project that you've heard a bit about. Um, and then I will discuss this architectural proposal for a smart forest city in Cancun, Mexico by Stefano Boeri Architects. And this is a plan that programs nature as infrastructure in, in this speculative master um, design here. In working through different approaches to programming nature as infrastructure, I outline how the smart and sustainable city moves beyond schemes such as energy efficiency and sustainable transport to incorporate digital natural programs of exchange, coordination and mitigation that also make social collectives and worlds. The programming of these infrastructures in part aligns with natural climate solutions and ecosystem services that would mobilize more than human ecologies as key operators in addressing and averting climate crisis while still realizing green growth. Yet it also indicates how these digitalized natures function less as purified ecologies in the outmoded binary sense of nature as a world apart and more as environments and systems that quicken to the logic of circuits, chips, and capital. Here, vegetation becomes technological, operating within digital functions that are coextensive with smart urbanism. But such programs of efficiency and responsiveness are as likely to render obsolete and inassimilable bodies, practices, or organisms that would not contribute to the productive augmentation of smart green economies and ecologies. So the first section um, of this talk then uh, following from the introduction is to look more closely at this infrastructuring of digital natures before I turn to the smart forest city in the second uh, portion of the talk. So transport utilities and communications have formed a basic mix of gray infrastructure that informs urban life. The provision of safe drinking water, readily available electricity and public roadways are among the infrastructural projects that are meant to undergird the development of so-called modern cities. These infrastructures continue to be updated in the form of smart systems, from smart energy grids to automated transport and surveillance systems that digitalize urban functions. Yet digitalization constitutes distinct modes of power, governance, and everyday exchange. As many studies of smart cities and smart infrastructures have just demonstrated, the digitalization of urban spaces can reorder social life, variously enable or constrain public engagement, and amplify inequalities by creating new zones of exclusion. In the context of climate change and environmentally stressed urban environments, infrastructure is increasingly more than the concrete and the cabled. It is also the green and the growing. In many green city proposals and projects, urban natures are reconstituted to perform particular work that is meant to achieve the infrastructural ideal of sustainable urbanism. Trees become carbon sinks, Low-lying vegetation acts as flood defenses, shrubs and vines take up air pollution, and mass planting mitigates urban heat island effects. Ecosystem services, natural capital, and natural climate solutions are just a few of the common concepts that describe how nature has become infrastructural as it is organized to mitigate and prevent the overheating, flooding, and collapse of cities. These increasingly common practices seek on one level to ensure the livability of cities, but they also raise concerns about what infrastructural collectives as well as exclusions could materialize with such projects. 
At the same time, green infrastructures are now increasingly digitally monitored and managed to ensure optimal contributions to urban processes. Networked green urbanisms do not simply involve planting and preserving what would have otherwise been paved over. Instead, these processes program nature as infrastructure that operates and responds to the demands of ongoing environmental change and climate crisis. Digital technologies undertake remote and in-situ sensing to assess carbon storage, capacity of trees and soil, Mapping technologies geolocate trees and vegetation as natural assets that can mitigate environmental stress. Robots plant, climb, and manage trees for improved growth and efficiency. Sensors detect water moisture and track chlorophyll levels. Citizen sensing initiatives map and maintain urban tree health. And joined up digital systems contribute to real estate development projects for creating future smart forest cities. In some cases, such digitalization of urban ecologies projects form what advocates refer to as an internet of nature. And you can see uh, one such scheme in this slide here. As part of the fourth industrial revolution, nature is brought online to perform in the quote, next frontier of ecosystem management that is meant to change our relationship with the natural world in the urban age, end quote. Here, the Internet of Nature fuses existing natural ecosystem dynamics and Internet of Things infrastructure, where plants can become biosensors for more resilient ecosystems, wearable technologies can monitor human health for well being nearby green space, blockchain and cryptocurrency can support green initiatives, and sensors can monitor urban heat islands, all contributing to ecosystem intelligence that will be held in the cloud for further processing. So there are as many variants on smart green infrastructure with Internet of Things uh, technologies undertaking environmental observation and monitoring for some time now. These proposals continue to develop into schemes such as the Internet of Nature, which emphasizes the intersection of ecological and digital forms of communication across inter ecosystems and IoT infrastructure. So as this sort of cartoon type uh, diagram suggests, nature has its own way of communicating, um, which IoT can tap into, amplify and further coordinate. Technologies ranging from remote sensing and sensors, data loggers and cloud computing, 5G and machine learning are seen to be able to contribute to the functioning of ecologies by enhancing and providing new forms of self-regulation self-organization and automation. So the idea here is to really use digital technologies to augment, to learn from these forms of communication and also to help them uh, really operate better. So you have a sense of this in a, a quote from uh, Nadina Galay, who is um, one of the proponents of Internet of Nature, um, really laying out how this is a way of fusing multiple ecologies here. It's ecologies of so-called nature, um, ecologies of uh, the city as an ecosystem, and the digital ecologies that would um, also join up with these systems. So here, this is a, a kind of uh, amplification of the intelligences that, that might emerge that are really creating a new language of urban ecosystems and a new set of um, devices really for, for making those more organized. So here are technologies that would not just connect up and improve the flow of cities as ecosystems, but also that would enhance the perceived mitigating, purifying and balancing effects of vegetation to solve the unwieldy problem of environmental change. These projects involve realizing ecosystem intelligence through connections with smart technologies whereby the communicative processes of plants would fold into the circuits of digital technologies. So this is a kind of co-constitution of plants and digital technologies where urban environments are meant to become more intelligent, resilient, and adaptable. And yet these technologies are not simply joining up to address the challenge of environmental change. Instead, they are delineating which organisms and environments are most intelligent and observable, 
which actors are best placed to harness this information for urban ecosystem development and governance, which urban environmental collectives might be activated and sustained, and which forms of social political action are most relevant and suitable for participating in these digitally augmented worlds. So I just want to make a, a small detour here then into the Smart Forest project, um, since this very much connects to the wider work that we're doing in this, um, in this research project. Looking here, especially at how technologies that seem to be combating environmental change are still operating at digi as digital technologies that have particular ways of tuning into environments. So how is it possible to look at these diverse forms of, um, uh, these diverse operations and forms of governance that digital technologies give rise to? So this is the kind of key area that we're, we're looking at with this project, which is to look at how digital technologies enable and constrain democratic approaches to environmental change. And this is a way of extending um, beyond the usual approach to smart cities by considering these broader sets of smart environments and how digital technologies are really remaking for us. So I think there's a question here of how forests are not only becoming technologies for addressing environmental change, but how the very designation of what a, a smart forest or what a forest is changes when it becomes a smart forest. So Smart Forest um, is now underway looking at the, this role of digital devices and how they reconfigure forests as social, techno social technical ecologies by examining the power relations and modes of governance that are generated through digital practices of observation, automation, optimization, datification, participation, and more. These technologies and operations raise key questions about smart environments as they develop within and beyond the smart city, how they influence democratic engagement as well as planetary governance. And this is really also thinking about how environmental politics and sociality are very much entangled um, with these devices. So for instance, digital technologies facilitate practices oriented toward measurement, data collection and automation often by expert or elite actors through processes that can um, at times exacerbate inequalities. These dynamics have been extensively studied within online spaces and in relation to economic and racial inequality, yet are less well understood in relation to the environmental inequalities that might materialize or be reinforced, especially in locations spanning from the urban to the rural and from the global north to the global south. The proliferation of smart technologies, infrastructures, and initiatives can shift the locus of governance from local to or urban actors to more remote and global corporate actors that control technologies and networks, thereby transforming governance and participation. So smart cities literature has, has demonstrated how the digital rewiring of environments has consequences for the experience of government um, and more. So here, how does SMART really change in relation to these uh, more organismal ways of understanding um, the digitalization of entities? The promissory aspects of the Internet of Trees or the Internet of Nature thus present as many points of consideration as the more comprehensively discussed Internet of Things. So to return specifically to the topic of smart green infrastructure and smart forest cities, Networked urbanism here involves amplifying communications within ecosystems by constructing urbanism through connections that are also processes of programming, operationalizing, and making functional according to distinct digital logics for urban environmental governance. The smart green city is often one of efficiency and automation, coordination and measurement, contingency and response. At the same time, the logics of digital operations, including processes for gathering data, apportioning ownership, realizing value and managing property, infuse digital vegetal operations. Green infrastructure, including smart urban forests, in turn would function as automated systems, mitigating, ventilating, and conditioning the effects of environmental change. So this is a sort of updated infrastructural ideal that would address planetary environmental change, 
where the seamless functioning of smart green infrastructure relies on a sort of cyborgian organicism that fuses technologies and ecologies. And yet, as Stephen Graham and uh, Simon Marvin point out in Splintering Urbanism, the emergence of any infrastructure has consequences for politics, social interactions, inequality, and distributions of resources. Infrastructures present distinct ways of making collectives and of joining up in urban environmental life. They can also create specific barriers and exclusions where infrastructural operations might be available to some, but not others. The privatization of infrastructure can cause fragmentation of services. So too do monopolistic formations of infrastructure have the potential to, to establish technocratic and inflexible exchanges, which constrain social and political life. Moreover, the resources required to create and sustain infrastructures can cause vast disparities across regions, where digital infrastructures in one location could contribute to extractive and unequal economies and relations in another. Smart green infrastructures must inevitably be considered within this longer trajectory of infrastructural problematics, rather than presented as an easy solution to pressing planetary problems. So now I will turn to consider uh, one example of how these infrastructural problematics erupt in a smart forest city. So the smart forest city in Cancun, Mexico is a speculative project and master plan that raises such que questions about the consequences of smart green infrastructure developments. Stefano Boeri Architects, a group well known for green city and building projects, developed the smart, city, the smart Forest City Plan in 2019. Their prior work has also involved developing uh, vertical forest buildings and numerous um, other urban forestry projects, which you might have come across. They're often in the pages of design magazines. So these buildings have morphed into a manifesto uh, for um, vertical forests worldwide, which you can see here um, on the map, a spread of how these developments are occurring. And here you can see an example um, of these buildings, which really incorporate all manner of vegetation into the building to become a sort of vertical forest. And often there are um, quite large trees growing on these buildings um, with the kind of understanding that this, this is improving urban sustainability, uh, drawing in pollutants, um, regulating uh, water levels, uh, temperature and more. And here you can see some of the components from what I think is a nine point manifesto for vertical forests. So the, um, the, uh, the smart forest city plan in Cancun is really uh, fitted within these developments. And this was commissioned by the Honduras based multinational textile manufacturer and real estate developer Grupa Karim. In addition to manufacturing personal protective equipment, Grupa Karim has uh, developed a number of smart cities as part of its broader real estate portfolio that includes commercial, residential, and industrial properties. Smart cities developed by Grupa Karim often take the form of business parks in Central America, Call cent where call centers cluster together in, for instance, San Pedro Sulu in Honduras, and outsourcing centers um, integrate with universities, residences, shopping, and a corporate diplomatic zone, for instance, in the capital city of Tegucigalpa. And here you can see the construction of one of these smart cities. You never know what um, time period you're going to get when you look on Google Street View. So I was lucky enough to find uh, this Altia smart city under construction here on this uh, Google Street View. Here you can see another view of this uh, construction underway. So in a promotional film on this development, the narrator stresses the be benefits of Altia, which are perhaps best reviewed by watching this short film. So hopefully this will work. So we can click out to this. Altia Smart City is the next generation of real estate development. Driven by technology, innovation, and environmental sustainability, Altia Smart City perfectly blends modern lifestyle and business elements. For corporations looking for reliable business solutions that are integrated into a fully self-contained community, 
Altia Smart City was designed around six impressive core elements that embody the smart concept. Each is valuable on its own, but together they create a fully sustainable commercial development that provides unlimited value to residents, business owners, and visitors alike. Altia Business Park attracts both local and multinational corporations, offering competitive advantages through technology and other specialized services, providing both customized and turnkey, hassle-free office solutions. You can focus entirely on your core business competencies. Our state-of-the-art Class A office towers are designed for the outsourcing and IT industries and also house world-class corporate offices. Features include telecommunications redundancy, pre-trade zone status, human resources and recruiting services, access to an educated, skilled, technologically advanced and bilingual local labor pool, ample parking and 24-hour security. Rexan is Altia's main recreational hub, encouraging creativity and relaxation. With a restaurant, coffee shop, reading lounge, high-tech creative studio, game room and music room, this unique facility is designed around open concept indoor and outdoor gathering spaces, improving employee engagement. Unitech University Campus is the largest and most prestigious university in Honduras. Modern and high-tech facilities and internationally recognized programs guarantee access to a highly qualified talent pool for companies operating within Altia with options for students to work and study concurrently. Altara Lifestyle Center serves both Altia's residents and businesses with more than 80 retail stores, featuring popular high-end stores, a movie theater, fitness center, and countless retail brands. Altara is designed to provide all your lifestyle needs. Located within Altara, the luxurious Courtyard by Marriott Hotel will benefit international visitors and Altia clients year-round. Altia Residences offers modern luxuries for upscale living with various size units available. We work with partners to implement a number of corporate social responsibility programs dedicated to education, health, and environmental sustainability that are designed to enrich the surrounding communities and maintain an environmentally friendly footprint. With over 10 years of experience developing customized business solutions and a team that is available 24 hours per day to streamline the process of doing business for international corporations setting up in Honduras, Altia has all the factors you will need to succeed on a global scale. Altia Smart City is a great place to work, live, and play. With its modern architecture and cutting-edge technology solutions, Altia Smart City is the first and only development of its kind in Honduras. Welcome to Altia, the future of business and lifestyle real estate development. Altia Smart City, the new way to do business. So as you can see um, from this prior smart city uh, developed by Grupo Karim, there very much is a fusing of uh, sustainability, technology, knowledge workers, and much more. And the uh, smart forest city in Cancun fits within this range of developments as a unique investment opportunity uh, in the words of Grupo Karim and uh, Boari architects within the smart city space. Just south of the Cancun International Airport, which I suppose pre-COVID had uh, over 15 million visitors per year, and moments from the beach on the Caribbean Sea, the smart forest city is designed as a smart green city of networked systems. So here you can see in more detail uh, in a map from Boeri Architects uh, that the project area is just south of the airport here. And here is a, a satellite view of the site, which is basically the um, disturbed site just above, uh, just above the uh, taco stand, if you can read that on the slides. And here's a, here's a street view of the, um, of the site here. This, so this innovation hub is meant to be regenerative, giving back to nature what would have otherwise been developed into a shopping mall, since this was apparently the plans for the site um, and the developer stepped in to do something more interesting with it. And in the Smart Forest City um, collages and perspectives for what the site will look like, floodproof waterways, drones, glass, and steel office towers with palm trees, garlanding solar panels form a tranquil setting where families, men in speed boats, and leisurely onlookers study desalination towers populating the scenes of this imagined Smart Forest City. 
Electric vehicles provide smarter transport options and provide a low carbon way to navigate this zone of high tech research and sustainable living. The proposed development includes a center for researching sustainability um, quote, that could host all worldwide university departments, international organizations, and companies that deal with sustainability issues in the future universities from all over the world. So it seemed to be a kind of intensive, if not futuristic, knowledge hub for sustainability research. Social life unfolds in scenes of seamless integration with the smart forest city, where subjects are relatively economically privileged knowledge workers inhabiting a protected enclave. Here, technology, nature, and society harmoniously commingle in scenes of manicured and digitalized urbanism that might be slotted into the genre of what uh, Barber and Pusilic architects have called the eco-fantasy project that especially focuses on performance and optimization. The work that nature will perform to keep the smart forest city operational and balanced includes absorbing and stocking more than 116,000 tons of carbon dioxide. The site includes 400 acres of green, green spaces with 7.5 million plants of 400 different species selected by a botanist and landscape architect. This mix of vegetation will also ensure that there are 2.3 trees to every inhabitant. The project and press literature stresses that the layout will ensure that public parks, private gardens, green roofs, and green facades will all contribute to achieving a perfect balance between nature and building footprints. Here, natural capital and green growth are meant to work toward a more perfectly organized environment. However, in many ways, extractive logics continue to inform how nature is put to, to work in support of existing socioeconomic systems. Indeed, these conditions could become even more entrenched through the privatization of smart green infrastructural enclaves situated within contexts of broader socioeconomic deprivation. Caribbean spaces and islands have, moreover, served as sites of ongoing respatialization in the context of offshore economies, tourism, mobility, and digital infrastructures, which can reinforce colonial forms of territoriality. Building on contributions from a climate engineering firm, TransSolar, the development is to, proposed to be self-sustaining, generating its own energy through solar panels, producing food on adjacent agricultural fields, desalinating its own water drawn from a water channel and maritime pipe, irrigating its crops, regulating floods through canals and water gardens, which you can see um, in the image here, and achieving resilience through carefully orchestrated networked connections watched over by industrious drones. For some reason, there are drones in uh, every one of these perspectives. I'm not quite sure if this is meant to signal the digital um, most pronouncedly. But, uh, behind the scenes, digital technologies are meant to help ensure the balance and self-sufficiency that the city would achieve. Similar to many development schemes, the smart forest city is designated as a forest less because anything typically resembling a forest materializes here and more because it conveys a seemingly sustainable approach to transforming a greenfield site into a business park. This organicism of technologies and ecologies is generative of an exclusive enclave that is self-sufficient on its own terms while still requiring the ongoing extraction of resources from and fortification against a wider world. The social harmony that unfolds within this proposed natural technological development includes carefully surveilled spaces where humans operate according to programs that are as networked and productivity oriented as those that would manage vegetation. Green and gray infrastructures are automated such that lower paid and potentially disgruntled workers, whether technicians or farm workers, are seemingly not required to keep the smart forest city functioning. The environmental footprint of digital technologies is also erased from view, even though these devices and infrastru infrastructures can contribute to the very problem of environmental change that they would avert by requiring significant energy and material resources for computer hardware and data processing. With these programmed natural infrastructures, there is an absence of weeds and discord. Such balanced systems do not make space for struggle and protest 
order prevails in this master plan, which transforms cities and forests toward urbanisms that resemble a biosphere experiment caught in, idyll in an idyllic state of homeostasis. Smart green infrastructures seem to soften the edges of the usual extractive in, in, and inequitable digital urbanisms, but reproduce many of the same infrastructural problematics of these developments. So to situate this development within a wider analysis of smart forests, the smart forest city again raises the question of what a forest is or what it might become. Here, the forest becomes a technology, ecology, development plan, and speculative inhabitation for how to continue the work of green growth in a time of planetary crisis. Forests here are the green trim and the garland, as well as the operative organisms, which would variously bolster an aesthetic and rhetoric of sustainability, bolted on with digital technologies as part of this eco-fantasy rendering of smart natures which are also concentrated in high-tech infrastructures within elite enclaves. So this is ultimately, um, I would suggest, reproducing the politics of a sort of splintering urbanism. So to conclude, um, infrastructures not only sustain forms of urban and environmental organization, they also construct collective worlds. Um, and here is a much different kind of example uh, from a New York City Street Trees project, which works very much with um, a sort of bottom-up mapping of uh, street trees in New York, which also creates a system then to look after and maintain these trees uh, through a variety of participants. As Lauren Berlant notes, infrastructures are not mere structures. Rather, they inform the movements of collective social life by generating politics, practices, and even struggle. Social life is not merely an expression of perpetual balance, but includes disagreement, brokenness, and even crisis. In other words, while infrastructure informs social and urban life, it also generates moments for extending it in other ways, beyond seamless functioning and toward transformative challenges and connections. However, such urban unfoldings of process and practice are less evident in plans such as the Smart Forest City and some similar smart, uh, smart urban forest initiatives. These projects would program nature as productive and harmonious infrastructure. Environmental change in the form of sea level rise, resource depletion or overheating are meant to be addressed through techno fixes, including adaptive waterways, self-sufficient agriculture and energy, as well as vegetative air conditioning that are meant to create digital green and resilient eco ecosystems. But such infrastructural imaginings often allied the inequalities, political struggles, environmental crises, and extractive economies that can continue to undergird plans such as the smart forest city. So in many ways, smart green infrastructures run the risk of reproducing and amplifying environmental crisis and injustice rather than transforming it, um, if not attending to these infrastructural problematics. Smart environments are now expanding beyond smart cities to encompass many different milieus from smart forests to smart oceans and smart agriculture. Technology companies, environmental scientists and state actors are contributing to the development and expansion of these digital systems, often to address the urgent, urgent problem of environmental change. But these ambitions also become evident as emerging planetary forms of governance that have yet to be adequately assessed for their social political effects. So I'm suggesting here with this um, really sort of short essay uh, looking at this problem that this might be a way to begin to uh, open up some of these questions to think more carefully about the forms of governance that uh, emerge here. This is a, a relatively overlooked area within social sciences research. Um, so this is really a um, necessary area to investigate if these inequalities are to be uh, more carefully studied. In this way, and following Winona LaDuc and Deborah Cohen, programmed green infrastructure projects force encounters with what they call, quote, the, practically, the profoundly practical work of infrastructure, end quote. Such practical work could even break with the destructive qualities of what these authors refer to as Windigo infrastructure, which requires relentless extraction and inequality to realize its infrastructural ideals. 
Instead, infrastructure as practice requires developing projects that would work toward what they call justice, decolonization, and planetary survival as joined up concerns. These are what they also call otherwise infrastructures that recognize the work that infrastructures do to sustain social life. So if urbanism's more than humans, democratic political life and social justice are to converge in generative ways, infrastructures, gray, green, and otherwise, need to be engaged with as key sites and processes of transformation. The practical work of infrastructure could then be wrested from the property developer's portfolio and architect's plan to become an ongoing collective project and political struggle for more livable urban worlds. So is this discussion of smart green infrastructure, the internet of nature, smart forests, and smart forest cities suggests by attending to these transforming intersections of environments, data, digital technologies, and social life, it might be possible to more fully identify and address the consequences of the increasing smartification of environments in relation to the planetary crisis of environmental change. So this is very much uh, the beginning of a, a larger project, Smart Forests, um, which you can um, visit our website. Um, and many of the, of the researchers involved with Smart Forests are, um, as Johnny mentioned, also presenting. So I encourage you to tune into their work as well as many other uh, amazing presentations um, in this workshop. This is part of a, a forthcoming work um, that is a special issue, um, a kind of anniversary issue. It's 20 years since the publication of Splintering Urbanism, hence the Splintering Urbanism references really looking back to this key text on infrastructure. Um, I also drew briefly on a text in Big Data and Society on Smart Forest. So thanks very much. And I look forward to the conversation.